Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the relatively uncommon Steel-type Pokemon Clink, its uncommon evolution Clang, and its rare final evolution Clink Clang, the three collectively known as the Gear Pokemon. While they might not look like the most dangerous of machines, the members of the Clink family are intriguing creations that can more than grind the gears of anyone that isn't prepared for what they can do to another's Pokemon. Clink consists of two six-toothed gears with a black center and dark black mouth marking, the centers having green protrusions that look like noses as each gear stares back with two eyes, one having a black pupil and the other being a white plus mark. The evolved form, Clang, have one gear that looks identical to this, but the other has grown much more in size, existing in the form of a double gear with one stacked on top of the other. The larger gear's front component is just a six-toothed gear with a large green center, while the gear behind it has eight teeth and is marked with a black ring and a circle mark, square mark, and a small white chevron that gives it the vague appearance of a face. Their final evolution, Kling Clang, retain the same basic form as Clang, but with the addition of another six-toothed gear connected to the rest of the body by rotating horizontally against the small gear of the double gear, with a red core at its center and a six-spiked metallic ring rotating around the tertiary gear component. Clank were originally developed many decades ago as part of an undisclosed research team's attempt to rival the Magnemite project which, at the time, had only recently achieved success. The researchers wanted to create a mechanical life form that was fueled by and could utilize electricity, but without relying on it so much as to become an electric type. As such, they took their design plan several centuries back and decided to use interlocking gears as the basis of their process. By utilizing the kinetic energy of rotating gears in combination with an internal generator, the researchers were able to create an artificial life form that could flawlessly use kinetic energy to generate an electric current, thus creating Clink. In time, however, the rival research team began to notice that Magnemite was suddenly evolving and becoming stronger by linking together, putting their work to shame. In frustration, the researchers built new parts and devices into their creations and destroyed the old products, thus ensuring that all developed Clink had the capacity to evolve into Clang. It wasn't until several decades later that the technology to continue the process arose, namely in the form of large capacity energy storage units. By this time, most of the research team had long since passed away. Wishing to see their project go one step further, however, the remaining members banded together once more. Instead of starting from scratch, the researchers decided to simply design a program that could easily be spread like a virus among Clang all across the world. The program itself was an interface that would activate after a certain period of time and allow Clang to interact with the researcher's newly developed energy storage unit. The end result of all this work was the creation of Kling Clang. Feeling that their work was now as complete as possible, the remaining researchers released all their captive specimens into the wild and apparently disappeared from the face of the planet. Though the spread of these creatures might not have been as widespread as their contemporaries in some parts of the world, these machines more than demonstrate their inclination towards electricity and having plus and minus as base abilities, while those that would use their metallic forms to correct for any mechanical errors that might arise in their operation can allow them to have clear body as a hidden ability. In terms of stats, in the case of Kling Clang, it can be seen that while they are decently powerful, they lack much of the raw power seen in the steel type because of their more balanced array of stats. As such, the only base stat of theirs that is above average for a fully evolved Steel-type Pokemon is the base speed stat, but they can still prove to be a serious threat in battle given the interesting array of attacks and techniques at their disposal. Since Clink require kinetic energy to generate electricity, they must constantly rotate at all times to remain functional. Because a rotating gear cannot hope to sustain its movement without an outside force, Clink are bounded together in pairs that are mentally closer than twins, only ever pairing well with their original designed partner. Besides giving each unit the equivalent of two minds, this also grants Clink and their evolutions the ability to utilize the unique gear grind attack, which is completely unique to their family, and shift gear technique. Each unit in a Clink either possesses an overall positive or negative charge, as the interaction between the two charges helps Clink to generate an electric current more efficiently. The more dominant charge in a pair is also what determines whether the Clink will have either the plus or minus ability. Furthermore, Clink are hardwired to pair with one and only one other individual, which is decided at conception. Any other individual mini gears will be repulsed with great vigor. Upon evolving, the gear of dominant electrical charge in a Clink upgrades itself and becomes self autonomous. In other words, the second mini gear becomes little more than a slave as the dominant gear becomes self aware and achieves full bodily control of the whole Clang unit. 
This increase in anatomical control further benefits Clang in terms of intelligence as it gives him the capacity to express emotions, an aberration that was not part of their original programming, by rotating their two mini gears and primary gear together in different directions and speeds. One should be particularly careful if the gears begin to rotate at extremely high speeds when the mini gear and the large gear line up perfectly along their edges, as it is a sure sign that they are angry and prepared to go all out against someone. In addition, because the primary gear of Clang technically exists separate of the other mini gear, Clang can fire its slow mini gear repeatedly as a projectile after rotating it to an exceptional high speed. This has the effect of turning the gear into a pseudo saw blade capable of easily slicing through soft flesh and weak armor. The only catch to this attack is that the mini gear must return to the primary gear after attacking, like a magnetically bound boomerang. If this does not occur, the primary gear will quickly run out of reserve energy and stop functioning. Clang changed relatively little in terms of bodily structure upon evolving. In place of structural change, however, Kling Clang acquired a third mini gear of sorts. This extra gear mainly acts as a glorified energy storage unit for kinetic energy generated through rotation with a primary gear, transferred and stored for later use. Because Clang rotated both their mini gear and primary gear extremely fast when angry, this is also when Kling Clang are able to produce an energy the most rapidly, and their gear grant attack becomes its strongest, a trait that should be taken notice of when in battle. Finally, the added gear comes equipped with a spiked ring of metal that floats around the entire Clang Clang module, held aloft by the electromagnetic field generated by the added gear. Aside from looking dangerous, the ring itself can act as an energy conduit for spreading out electrical energy over a wide area and meshes well with the rest of the unit to provide a power boost in certain electrical environments. As such, Clang Clang have the ability to naturally learn the rare magnetic flux and geared up techniques immediately after evolving, as well as electric terrain technique later in life, and the discharge attack has an exceptionally long range that effectively exceeds that of any other known species of Pokemon, making them a potent weapon on battlefields of any size. Though some might not know what to make of their abnormal forms, the members of the Clang family are powerful machines that can more than put the power of motion to good use in battle. They might be a group that always requires numbers to function, but given how tightly they're usually bound together, you shouldn't have to worry too much about anyone trying to really separate them. Just do yourself a favor and let these machines do what they do best and keep right on moving at all times. They can't exactly keep themselves going if they are forced to stop, and any attempt to make them do so will likely be met with a crushing blow, more than likely to mangle or electrocute you, or even both. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always a pleasure to help teach others about the world of Pokemon and the many facets of it that exist in both the world we call home and the world they call home. If you'd like, please leave a comment and subscribe and ring the bell to this channel to get regular updates on content and anything else that might be going on. You can find me and my written work on DeviantArt under the name Utitis and be informed of information and content uploads on my Twitter page and my Patreon page. Donations are always welcome. Always remember, the world of Pokemon is a vast and varied place, and there's no telling what secrets might be hiding just around the corner. So keep watch, stay vigilant, and always prepare for the unexpected. Until next time, have a wonderful rest of the day.